Hello my little stars, 10 likes on this video and you will get another If Mafia Fell chapter. That being said, this bit here is the friendship route, aka the Lawrence route, aka where we try to find our freaking brother who's gone missing. This will also contain all the hidden messages and yeah, again, if you want another episode of this specific route, be sure to click like, 10 likes and you will guarantee to get another one up as soon as possible. That being said, uh, this one I didn't actually put any warnings on because it's straightforward pretty much. This is a higher age rating than Siren Call and if you didn't like Siren Call you're not going to like this and if you don't like anything associated with like sooner or later you'll be mine or you just really can't stomach any type of mafia related topics or anything in the dark dark world of the mature side of life then yeah this is not for you. Toddle off. Goodbye. Shoo shoo. Uh, in this one as well, it will also include my theories. That being said, uh, let's just get on with the video. Hello, my little stars, and welcome back to If Mafia Found by the Job Pedal 16. Today, we are tackling the friendship route. So, but here is chapter two Dreaming of You, where we'll get to find out how exactly our soul decides to apparently warn us about. Something that probably happened in the past and apparently we freaking forgot as usual because from my understanding possibly we've gone through all this shit before and my soul is trying to tell me Hey dumbass you freaking forgot but you've been through this shit more than once and your brother is missing You already technically I get the feeling that we probably already know what's become of Lawrence We just can't freaking remember so we're probably racing against the clock to try and change his fate and save him from whatever the hell has happened to him. So I have many theories of what has probably happened to Lawrence and one of them is a bit more disturbing than others. Hopefully he's not an amalgamation who's been turned into a monster or anything like that. And hopefully he's still technically a human and always technically still alive. But you know the fact that I can hear his soul is not a good sign. <laughs> Again, it was only implied during a bad ending, but you know, anything is possible. That being said, I wanted to clarify as well that I have changed the route flower to be roses. So that being said, let's get through this. <sighs> let's see how this goes. Chapter 2, Dreaming of You. So I'm also going to quickly highlight to make sure our soul hasn't hidden anything. Because sometimes our soul likes to hide things. Okay, doesn't seem to be talking. Your brother smiles easily. It doesn't matter how his day went. A small act of kindness at the end of it would bring out a smile. That's what you miss the most. His smile. You know what I actually miss? I miss his physical appearance. I miss him physically being in front of me. Physically being there for me to talk to, touch, and to make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. Like, literally go missing one day. Your lives were turbulent and volatile, but he never stopped smiling for you. No bother. Maybe he knew how much that smile meant means to you. Most nights you dream about him. You dream of the happy memories as often as the scary ones, while the rougher with the bad you try to focus on the good. You want to remember that smi that he smiles easily. You want to remember the way he called you Frisk. So this is something that I want to like talk about. Why Frisk? Now either my character has been to the Fell Kingdom prior when they were much younger, and there's some freaking shenanigans going on there because they seem really weird to call me Frisk. And on top of that, I appear to have the ability to reset because it's implied that apparently I've died multiple times and I've died multiple times to freaking Sans, Free Winged Dings, and so on. So, is the reason why I'm called Frisk because I've been to the Fell Kingdom? Or is there a completely different reason for it, or what? Why frisk of all the goddamn names, Lawrence? Let's slidey slidey. Okay, there's nothing here. You didn't know why he chose that nickname, and it's freaking frustrating. You asked him once, he gave you a strange smile. It suits you, was all he told you. It suits you. What kind of malarkey was that? 
He has one more name for you. You are his... Well, we're going to go with Watson because we're trying to solve his disappearance. You love your brother. You love remembering him through your dreams. That night you don't dream of him. You dream of falling. Okay, so... We dream of falling. Okay, now I really do think that we're falling into the freaking Fallow Kingdom. Did, our did this child go on freaking shenanigans? What is this? Why am I falling? You're heavier than you've ever been. You cannot move your limbs or turn your head as you fall into the dark and unknown. All you do is fall, fall, fall. Until you hit the ground and splash into nothing. Oh, 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 oh no. There doesn't seem to be anything here, but I fell. Well, that could mean falling down into the Fell Kingdom. That's what all Maggie comes to mind when I think of that. Oh, we fell off something? Why were we falling? It's supposed to be like a warning for like things to come. So what am I, what, what? <laughs> what am I supposed to take from that? From freaking Sans one, it was deadly smoke of suffocation. With wingy dings, it's the wonderful embrace of tentacle shadows in the void. Papyrus was deadly cooking accident. And then there was Ezreal's... Sorry, Ralsei. Or it was freaking vegetation was trying to kill me. And this one is falling. God, my soul warns me in really weird, disturbing ways. You're welcome. Shut up. Okay, so that being said, our dream was of falling. Huh. Still nothing here. Your body throbs painfully, as if every bone in your body has been shattered. There is a disconnection between your mind and your body, as if a part of you is still in that dream. It takes you several minutes of laying in pain until you process the fact that it was only a dream and there was no reason to be hurting. Is it a dream, though, or is it a freaking memory? You glance at the clock. It reads 3.33am. You swallow roughly. Why do you still ache? It would completely throw off your entire schedule if you got up now and you try to lay back down. You hope you don't fall. Did you fall out of bed? I tend to fall out of bed. That's like a really bad habit for me personally. I tend to fall out of bed sometimes. Like, more like I fall down the side nearest to like the radiator. Anyway, you wake up without an issue in the morning. You make your bed as you do every morning, although you feel more tired than normal. The nightmare lingers in the back of your mind, and you move sluggishly. Even if you drink your chocolate milk, you still feel out of sorts. You can't mess up again. This makes me think, yes, my theory is we do know what's become of Lawrence. We have seen what becomes of Lawrence, but then some reason we died and we reset. Or maybe we keep failing, so we're trying again and again and again, either to race against time, to stop whatever's happening to him. But the problem is, we don't freaking remember things, so we never make it to him in time. But it says you can't mess up again. Because there's no option, you can't mess up again. It's not an option, it's not a choice. You can't do it again. You need to succeed this time. So I'm going under the theory that we have, we know what becomes Lawrence. The only thing is because we reset, we can't freaking remember shit all. And our characters... Ugh. That's what I'm believing. I'm believing we have already seen what becomes Lawrence. And our mind is trying to give us hints and clues. So we've reset, we've died. Multiple times. Half your morning run will make you feel better. You'll be out in the daylight, sunlight, with no darkness in sight. What has the darkness got to do with freaking falling? Now I really do think we're falling down the freaking foul kingdom. And if which, which case, if there's yellow flowers at the barn, count me out. Or are we falling into something else? Wherever we fell onto, we went squish. Understandable gravity has that effect on things. You trip several times on your run, barely catching yourself each time. Stop tripping. Okay. Anything else, character, you want to, like, throw in at me? No? Okay, nothing here. You take a long bubbly bath and scrub your ivory skin raw with your rose-scented soap. You don't feel any better than when you first woke up. 
This isn't good. You need to pull yourself together. You work that evening shift tonight, so you have a lot of time. You finish getting ready and you force yourself to move slowly, carefully. You're in control of yourself, not your dreams, not your memories. And that's important to emphasize, not your memories, because it is a memory. We're remembering something. There's the port and hint. That's what we need to take in. This isn't a nightmare. This is a memory. We are remembering what happened. You slip on your floral dress and you shiver, wrapping yourself up in a blanket. You finish your hair later when it's closer to your time to leave. You have hours left in your day before you have to go to work. You ask your time to do something extra for you that would be really nice. It might make you feel better. Um. Listen to music, why not? You turn the radio and take a seat on your couch. You listen as the host talks about meaningless yet fascinating gossip. God, are we going to be listening to Metal Top? Swing, rock, opera, orchestral. You know what? We'll go with orchestral. Music finally starts to play and you feel yourself drifting away. Hold on, I need to make sure there's nothing freaking hidden in here. Oh, goody, goody, there's nothing. You absolutely hum along. For the next hour and a half, you feel content. You feel better. You enjoy your hobby. It makes you happy and relaxed. It's not too expensive. To maintain so it's one of the simpler pleasures you constantly love yourself. So you have to admit your one other interest. If you were richer, you'd love to be able to horseback riding 100% down. We technically used to have horses when I was younger. When my real father was alive. Before he like passed away when I was like very small. And we have trophies and ribbons and stuff from him doing things with the horses, so... That aside, hold on. So, have you hidden anything? Maybe. Ah, you have, haven't you? Yes, you did. Lawrence used to always tell you to dream big when you went to school. Perhaps dreaming of horseback riding isn't big. What are you kidding? It's freaking expensive. But when you live paycheck to paycheck, the expensive it takes to make it happen feels big to you. You start to pick up your things. Your mug is dry, so you put it back in your cabinet. The creaks when you open it. Your eyes swipe over the countertop and you brush your hand over it. I must be neat for you to get a treat. I swear, if these freaking parents show back up years later, I'm smacking at least one of them. Your nose wrinkles and you need to scratch at your ear. Ugh. You hate remembering her sing song voice. Already, you can smell the overhanging stench of bleach and you feel your hands burn. Ugh. You absolutely rub your hands. That nightmare must have tired you more than you thought. You glance at your clock. You have time before work. Too much time, really. Then you have a lot of time before freaking work. Think of something. Try to freaking remember. Leave notes. Do something. You choose to leave and you put on your pr- your pumps and a pair of white gloves and you're out the door. You head to the flower shop. A wonderful place we love to go. The lovely, wonderful flower shop of Daisy. I swear though, if her son turns out to be the freaking Dr. Rose, I will be so freaking vividly angry. I'm just saying... If Dr. Ross has anything to do with Daisy, I will flip tables. The doorbell chimes when you enter the shop. It's a cute shop. The main room has rows of baskets that are filled with vibrant flowers. The front door has a floral design and the main shop window, it is large enough to cover the entire front wall. There are vines covering it. Also, Daisy better not at any point freaking die. Or I'll be also be freaking cross about that. So I'll be cross if her son turns out to be anything bad or so to Dr. Rose. And I'll also be really cross if Daisy dies. Because I like Daisy. Daisy is like, like the, I don't have a Mama Tori so far on this. So she's going to be my Mama Tori away from underground. <laughs> she's Mama too. Or at least my gossip queen, because she's like she's like the go-to like bestie over here. It has a floral scent to it, and it's a perfect combination of numerous flowers in the shop, but it's not overpowering. 
If you want to carefully select a pretty flowers with subtle scents so guests wouldn't feel overwhelmed when they first walked in. Most days the owner also keeps the door open to let in the breeze and circulates the air. It's rare to find any clothes. You soon realize when you step in you aren't the only customer today. The owner has two others. There's an elderly woman who goes by the name of Daisy. She doesn't like to be called Miss or Ma'am. Totally down for Daisy, see? Only Daisy. She's a tall woman who laughs with her whole body and has many wrinkles on her torn skin from spending her youth in the sun. She used to share the same apartment complex as you before she moved into the floors above her shop. For a time, it was also your bot. She technically she used to live in the apartment complex. Is that important, the Daisy? Because we know Daisy. What did Daisy used to have our apartment? Was it Daisy? What well, did Daisy own the freaking apartment that we're living in? And whose son is freaking Dr. Rose? He better not be freaking Dr. Rose. <laughs> it is a possibility though because she was in the same apartment complex. But I don't know. And he would have medical background. But then there's a whole medical book involving freaking Ezreal. This is the back. I'm sorry, Roltsy. This like in the back of my mind, which was like very well empathized for like, here, look at this. He's got a medical book. Look at him reading this book. That decide, we'll keep going. Uh, for a time was also your boss. He used to work in the flower shop before you shifted the black swan. When Daisy broke her hip while her son was still on tour. Oh my god. It's. Is it the son? Is that why Dr. Rose wasn't active? Was he away on tour? Okay, dark petals. Here's one theory. One theory for all the peeps out there that are freaking watching. Who besides me is now starting to think that maybe it was Daisy's freaking son? Because Daisy used to stay in the apartment complex, meaning she could have originally owned the apartment we were staying in, possibly. And her son might have had some connection. Some of those freaking yellow flowers, roses came from. Either way, another thing is, Dr. Rose was active for a bit, then all of a sudden he freaking stopped. Could he have been on tour at the time elsewhere? Hmm? And then all of a sudden he comes back and then he resumes what he's doing? I mean, there's one theory, there's one freaking culprit. It could be freaking Daisy's son. He was touring. And he would have had to learn to do medical things as well. And I haven't seen her son, have I? No, I haven't. I just know that apparently he's mentioned by here. Okay, possibly it could be him. Anyway, and he would know us. He would be someone that would know us. He would know what my favorite flower is. Because Daisy knows what my favorite flower is. And he would have seen me come into the shop a lot. Is it him? Is he Dr. Rose? Nah. Yes? Nah. Okay, peeps, if he turns out to be in now, I'm going to say right now, if I, if I, if he turns out to be Dr. Rose later, we can say, I did say this. I did say this theory in freaking chapter two. My theory was there was one theory that he could be in, that he could be Dr. Rose. Anyway. That means said. Uh, da, 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 da. Some are still on tour, she didn't have many options. She couldn't afford much. You had just moved in and were desperate for money. You needed a second job, and while the pay was abysmal, it was easy and better than nothing. She was a good boss, good woman. You helped her outside of work as well, carrying and putting away groceries, running a few errands, and in turn endeared yourself to her. Which means we would have seen her a lot. He would have seen us. Maybe she, Daisy, talked about us a lot with him. Now she makes your favorite dessert. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. 
chocolate cake. What is tiramisu? Tiramisu sounds familiar. I feel like I should know what that is. We're gonna go chocolate chip cookies. Who doesn't love cookies? Yum. On days you feel blue and best of all, you get on a discount. The peonies will look lovely in bouquet, says Daisy. Are you sure, frets a young woman? She's holding a magazine up to Daisy at the counter. Is this colour right? Yes, it's the exact same. Reassures Daisy. There, see, I told you to stop and carry them, says a tall bunny monster beside her. A monster. Growing up the country, you didn't encounter them often. The ones that you did see were always just passing through. Since moving to the big city, however, you see them daily. When you were able to attend the school, you were told that humans and monsters broke in peace centuries ago through a sacred union, a soul bond between a human princess and a monster prince. Okay. Okay. This is important. Where's my soul bond? I want my freaking romance. Lawrence, be, be better freaking alive. I want my freaking proposal, man. Before that union, it was not thought possible for a human and a monster to be soulmates. In order to be soul bounded, one party needs a lot of magic. Only a core of humanity has magic, and less than half of that has enough magic to use. The power to bind two souls for all eternity takes an incredible amount. Prior to the first union, monsters thought they could only perform such an art with other monsters. Even with this knowledge, unions between monsters and humans are a rarity. Not for the human's lack of trying. Powerful monsters stop aging, and when they soul bind to a human, that partner stops aging too. That's going to be important. That's going to come back freaking later. That's going to come back later. I guarantee that's going to come back later to me. Last century, there was a market for human who would pay to try and force a union as a attempt for immortality. It nearly triggered another war between monsters and humans. Hmm. But it was humans who paid, so that way they would have to have monsters to bring in. Things have died down enough that there isn't an overt tension, but the trust broke when that came to light. It was rare to see a monster and a human couple. You start off to the side and look at the flowers. You have business here so you don't want to leave, and you also don't want the couple to feel like you're eavesdropping. You certainly probably get plenty of side eyes already. Jealous humans, distrustful monsters, and plenty of bigots looking down on interracial couples. You don't want to be thrown in with that lot. The couple talks with Daisy for several more minutes before they leave, and Daisy knows who immediately. My little rose lover! Daisy's in entire demeanour is bright. Did you see the couple that left? Aren't they adorable? They're getting married. That's nice. Isn't it though? Agrees Daisy. I love making bouquets for weddings. When you get married, you'll let me do the flowers at your venue, right? You smile on you. And you tell her she, uh, she can also do your bouquet. Sweet child, speaking of love, found anyone yet? I'm half expecting that freaking flowery to turn up out of nowhere. But I'm like, oh yeah, we can't have flowery, we got Ezreal. No, you don't want to. <laughs> I can't see why. Well, there's a lot of death going around, you know. And I still need to find freaking Lauren so I can't have my happy endings. So, well, did you throw in anything here? Maybe, me. Yeah, I thought you freaking did, you sneaky biscuit. I can't see why, she says. You're the loveliest woman in this whole city. You duck your head, a sheepishly pleased smile on your face. Daisy has a way of sincerely complimenting others to make them feel warm. And you aren't immune to this. And after the night you had, it feels good to be near someone kind. You know, I could try to set you up with someone, she offers. There's a lot of mums at my bingo club who brag about their sons. You reassure you're fine? Are you sure she presses? Yes, yeah, she scrunches up her face and into a long road. Humor a poor old lady. No, she sighs drastically. You break my poor fragile heart. You've seen her manhunt her military son and win. Military son. Military. Key word. Military. He would know. He would have access to the flowers. 
he would have access to like medical knowledge because you'd have to learn about that while you're in there he was gone for a bit and then came back why would he be that maybe he was on tour and that's why he was gone for so long <sighs> that's what i'm thinking i really think that it might be him oh he could be a red herring you refuse to believe she is fragile you will not fall for this ruse when she realized this she rolls her eyes and waves her hand smoothly fine fine here for the usual order yes your usual order as a bonus for daisy liking you you get a special discount in ordering posters her sister works at a printing press daisy takes your order and comes back a few weeks later with stacks of missing person posters for your brother lawrence it's almost time to put up a new batch, as the old ones have become worn down from the weather. You aren't sure if it'll make any difference five years of putting them up and you've not yet received a clue. Not that you can freaking remember, you dumbass, because you probably have had a clue, you just freaking can't remember. Because reasons. But there's not much else you can do. You have to keep trying. He will never give up on you, and so you will never give up on him. All right, little Rose lover, she says, her voice soft and eyes full of sympathy. You already have money ready. You already have the money ready and you hand it over to her over the counter, ignoring the look she gives you. She puts the money away. It'll be some time until the post is ready. Before you go, she says, how about a corsage? For what? Because, she said, you're alive. Isn't that reason enough? You give her a smile, and she takes a yes and happily moves around her shop to pluck a few flowers. We're going to see now she has the yellow roses, because that was my favourite flower, so we'll see what she does. Hypothetically, she says, if you were interested in some company... No. <laughs> You're no fun, can't you answer a few questions? She batters her eyes. For me? When you don't respond, she offers a counter offer. For some freshly made chocolate chip cookies, hmm? They're fresh from the oven. Not even for that. Her laugh bounces around the shop, lighter and brighter than the warm noon sun that filters in. My darling rose lover, I do love your stubbornness. You giggle, and she finishes quickly. Ta-da! All done, she says. She takes a corsage made of yellow and yellow flowers and ties it on your wrist. Yellow and yellow. <laughs> you go to work? Yellow and yellow flowers? Oh my god. Because our soul is yellow and our favorite flower is yellow. You going to work? Yes. Be safe, she says. You will. You always are. As you leave, you get a rush of vertigo and for a brief moment feel as if you're falling. At once you're reminded of the dream. The nightmare's lingering on you. The memory's lingering on you. See, it's a memory. You're mem remembering you're falling. And vertigo means we fell from quite a high place for us to get vertigo. So this is just emphasizing it's a memory, it's not a nightmare. For throw out the fact that it's a nightmare, forget that shit, it's not. It's a memory, it's your mind reminding you this has happened. There's a warm tingle in your chest. Plushies! It's been five years since you last felt that way. But it doesn't matter. No, it hasn't. It's been a lot more. It's been less than that. You know this feeling. You know what it means. Your pa taught you many things growing up. Oh, God. He taught you to be brave. How to be afraid, because he's an asshole. He taught you how to stand firm. How to take a hit, because he's an asshole. He taught you to persevere. No matter how bad he hurts, because he's an asshole. But the most important lesson he ever taught you was how to trust your instincts. Trust your soul. At least that was one good thing he did for you. Your soul is special. It's strong. Powerful. And again, is it because of our soul? Is there something about our soul? The pure, like, you are you thing. That thing that makes your soul unique to you. Is that what draws people to us? There's, there's something about it. There is, like, something that's just genuinely that powerful. That it, like brings things to you like a freaking magnet besides the fact it's yellow through your soul you've had near flawless near flawless near flawless keyword almost perfect intuition when it comes to your safety after all things have to kill your face before yourself is like wait 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 mayday 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 trouble 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 you die to this 
But then when it meets Dr. Rose, it's like, you yeah, know, I'm not bothered. He's hot. And then all of a sudden, you're dead. Because your character decides to literally do shit on her own again. My god. Eh. And a pause less than this ability grew to his current state. Why was he trying to like... Okay. It's how you avoid death. It's how you and Lawrence succeed in evading part when you fled into the night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your instincts know where to go in dangerous situations and how to survive. If you've died to it. As if you've already done it before. Which you have. And learned from your mistakes. Which you did. The ability isn't something you advertise. You don't freaking need to. And the last thing the ability has triggered, it led to your brother's disappearance. But why did it lead to our brother's disappearance when it triggered? What? We died to something that killed us. And then our brother was gone. We reset. But our brother is still missing. There's something more about your dream. Is it? No, it's not. It's a freaking morning, you dumb shit. Forget about the prophecy. Prophecy crap. In other words, it was inevitable. Lawrence disappeared. And then we died. So whatever took Lawrence probably freaking killed us. Is that what we're trying to say? The last thing ability you has triggered, it led to your brother's disappearance. So in other words, we met something already and then our brother disappeared after that. Even when we reset, Lawrence didn't come back. Hmm. Well, that'd be too complicated. We're definitely trying to race against the clock to try and save Lawrence from the fate he's in. Are you going to listen to it? Well, what other freaking choice do I have? My character's a freaking dumbass. Name, Twinkle. Nickname, Friska Watson. Eye color, pink. Soul color is yellow, aka Justice. Hair is long. Hair color is white. Tidy curled. Ivory skin. Scent is roses. Favorite flower is the yellow rose. Your morning drink is chocolate milk. You prefer breakfast is yogurt with fruit. Your favorite dessert is chocolate chip cookies. You should wear a floral dress with a pair of white gloves because in case you murder someone or you need to pick up something because of evidence reasons. And pumps. You wear your hair in a bun with a flower because flower theme. Your apartment is warm and cozy. You wake up on time. And uh, without issue, regarding yourself, routine is hard, but you know it's worth it, so you keep it up. You work as a singer and you love to listen to music, but one day you'd like to go horseback riding. When your attention is triggered, there's a warm tingling in your chest. When you're happy, you tend to giggle. You would rather not be in a romantic relationship, you are on the friendship road. Commit. Because that's why we're here. Oh my god. Okay. So nothing here okay as your pumps click against the sidewalk you catch a whiff of like a unique smoky oh frick how high sands that's freaking sands that is that's freaking sands spying on me the small tickle the smell tickles your nose and it's gone by a second whiff strange no not really it's just freaking sands just popping in like hey oh you're like hi sands i can smell your smoke again i don't know what you're talking about why are you stalking me no reason because this is might actually be like the first time Sans has like come across our soul. So obviously he can sense the song the soul's presence, like how strong it is, because when your thing talks about it later. So Which means probably um one of the dangers probably does actively seek out strong souls, maybe. And that's why they become like super interested in the fact that we have a strong type of soul. And they want to, like, make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands, maybe? I don't know. That's always could be maybe something going on. But again, we need to keep working out things. Either way, we know Sans. Sans is, not at present, not a threat to us at all. I'm not concerned by Sans at all. Because I, I know Sans' personality at least well enough to know that he's not technically right now an active threat to me. So I have nothing to be worried about. 
It's gone by the second whiff. Strange. 30 minutes later, you arrive at the Black Swan. You train to you provide your uniform and check your parents to show you look well put together. And not at all like you've been struggling with a lingering nightmare all day, aka a past memory that traumatised you where you were freaking falling. Once satisfied, you won't get teased for a less than acceptable presentation. You head out and start your work day, and a week slips by. It would be lovely, a week. Lovely, we love a week. Oh, wow. So, have you got anything hidden in your shenanigans? Oh, no, nothing here. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's fantastic. Keep it that way. You step into the black swan. The familiar low jars place in the background and your pumps sink into that red carpet. Your footsteps are swallowed up by the background noise and you move silently. You have to pay the protection fee soon. Not that it actually matters. And if they decide to unexpectedly hike up the amount again, you want to ensure you won't be caught off guard. You need the money. Good evening, Miss Twinkle, says Ray, one of your co-workers. He's an older man with dark skin, coffee-coloured eyes and a friendly disposition. He does his job without complaints and has helped you deal with the rough customers. He's willing to take on extra shift when someone is sick. I don't believe Ray is going to be Dr. Rose. I'm going to state right now. I have no suspicions on Ray. If he suddenly turns out to be it, I'll be like, what? Because I didn't see that coming. It was rare to see him working the evening shift. He's a bartender for the day shift and you only ever see him when he works a double in the evening. Your attendant's greeting. Thank you for covering for me, he says. Hope all went well. Oh, that's right. You covered for Ray last week and he and was unexpectedly forced to work the back tables. At the time, you thought, eh, that's fine with you, more money. You smile politely and assure him all went well. He looks relieved. Good, I forgot what the error was like until Anna mentioned it and when I got back, I was worried to get stuck with a rough crowd. You shook your head. All went well. Good, good. Ray, we could use your help in the back, says one of the cooks from the kitchen. Come in, says Ray. He dips his head in your direction. Have a good evening, Miss Twinkle. Stop freaking calling me miss. You wish him the same. You really did your vocal warm ups. Ah, brr, brr. <laughs> On the way in, you will need to change into your shimmery dress the brass provided for you to use them on stage. Looks better under spotlight than your normal clothes, and you continue your journey to the back room. You enter the back room, and not to be mistaken with the back rooms. But still, okay. Have we got anything hidden here? So, have you left any shenanigans for me to uncover? No. Good, good, you're doing great. Okay. The back room is a dingy little locker room that is shared by all the staff of the Black Swan. There's a private room in the back for workers to change into uniforms, but it's only big enough for one person to go in at the time. As you enter, a waitress steps out of the changing room. She's Wendy. She works at Wendy's. <laughs> A waitress with sleek black hair cast in a ponytail. She's a college student who works the evening shifts and then goes to class in the morning at that <laughs> university because I refuse to say the name of that wretched place. Who recently started to accept women in their ranks and from the story she told you the professors don't always agree with that policy chain. Ugh. God, that would have got me wicky back then. Oh, you will go on your inferior girls from home education. Oh, shut up. You're just intimidated because some of us are in extremely intelligent. My character is not one of them. <laughs> I know. Twinkle, be nicer. Look, I will. When she right now has irritated me because she did the one dumb thing she did which was during the bad ending again i'm glad it ended up being a bad ending but at the same time i'm still annoyed she became satiant and didn't put her own life as a priority in that moment which is suck up to the serial killer until you can freaking get out of range But oh well. That being said, <clears throat> she handles it well enough, and she keeps. She says, "Keep your head down and do your work, kind of lady." Wendy smiles and sees you. Good evening, Miss Twink. Good evening, Twinkle. You return a greeting. She started the black swan evening trip sometime as you four years ago. Mm, okay. 
Is that important for me to know that she started four years ago? The two of you have outlasted several of the co-workers. The only time you don't see her on the evening shift is when she needs to take the night off for the exams the next day. Okay, that is not suspicious though. You're looking better today, she says. Slept well? Better? No new nightmares at least. It's not a nightmare, there's a freaking memory, you dum dum. Good, she says. I'll see you out there. You give her a nod and step aside so she can leave. You finish getting ready for a few minutes before your shift officially starts. My freaking character is like, oh, yeah, me, me, me. <laughs> It's a nightmare. As you leave the back rooms, the front door to swan opens up and your nose tickles. You catch a whiff of something spicy and smoky as... That's like one of the hottest skeletons in town. Free walks in, like, oh damn. So control yourself. I can't help it, he's freaking hot. Calm down. I don't want to. <gasps> We're not on the Romans route. Oh, dang it, now I'm sad. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. All right, let's continue. Right, you turn your head and look at a group of gentlemen entering the Black Swan. There are five men and one monster. Three of the men you recognise as regulars, and you know them to be part of the Vaisadu family. The Vise. The other two are fresh faces, and the monster? You hadn't seen this monster before, but you did smell his cigar, though. You didn't see him, but he was around. And you heard about him. Monsters don't come into the Black Swan often. The ones that do are the ones that have ties to one of the families. Monsters are considered the best muscle for hire. If you can fold them due to incredible magic, tough durability, and some of them have the immunity to common human weapons. Monsters are large. Always. Even short monsters easily hit six foot, and these monster is no exception to the rule. He is large on every count. And is dressed in a fine black suit with a black tie, and he wears a hat. A suit hat to match. And on his hand, even at a distance, you can see gold rings on his finger. It takes you a few moments to realise the fingers are bony. He's a skeleton monster. You had not met one of those before? That's not true, you have. Your memory remembers you have. But again, you don't freaking pay attention. <laughs> the only monster you've encountered prior have been Canine or Rodant. <laughs> yeah, we're talking more. You're about to meet a fuzzy freaking goatee fluff ball as well. Huh. You dismiss it from your mind. You doubt anyone wants to be ogled out due to their appearance. You have work to do. I want to ogle at him. So we'll shut up. You complete your shift without fuss. Okay, so now we're going to um, hear him talking to Papyrus. You turn in your casual clothes and walk out the front door. All went well. You turn your head to the source of the loud voice, startled by it. You notice the skeleton from before. The one with the red smoke is standing beside another monster. This one is tall, very tall, with a similar black suit and hat. He's skinnier than the first one and has a much longer face with a big spiky mouth. All went well, placed the shorter skeleton. Come on, I told you I could handle it and I did. Yes, well, the tall one's voice carries over to you. It's a booming voice. You don't stop, you continue to head home. As you walk, you mentally count how much you made and how much you have. And will it be enough? You cross the street and go through the alley. I don't like going through alleyways. I really don't think it's a good idea. You do the mental math and recall what is hidden in your saving box. You keep your money in a little piggy bank. <laughs> sock. Oh god, the sock. Puzzle box. M motopuri bag. I don't know what a mo motopuri bag is. What's that? What is, what's this weird little bag? Let me know what this says. Well, you made enough. Way to go, you! Actually, you made more than enough. Everything you from Char on the day after will go straight to your savings. You'll be able to purchase another round of posters at this rate. Yay! Maybe even hire a detective. No, 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 no. Let's not hire a detective, because whenever we get somebody else involved, they end up freaking dead. Robert in the box and Mr. Peterson. No freaking way, no freaking how. We're not hiring a goddamn detective who's going to end up in a body bag. Absolutely freaking not. I'm just saying, I'm against my character hiring anybody for this shit. You exit the alleyway and step out onto Main Street and you stop. There's a monster standing on a lamppost. Conveniently, we've just seen like two monsters and we've seen another one. 
he's a troll monster. So the fact that they hear our soul like doesn't react to him. This just confirms that he has not hurt me at all, which is good. This monster is large, easily compared to the tall monsters out from the Black Swan. He has white fur, long ears, and two kill tones. He wears a pair of black suit pants, a white shirt with a black vest, and a black armband on the top. He sits up with the moon. The fact that he's got a black armband, you know, just proves something. He lost look on his face. A monster you... You know he could be dangerous, but when you look at him, you feel no threat. Your soul doesn't even wrap. Yeah, because he hasn't done anything. You walk up to him and you ask if he's okay. He looks at you and he grins. Um, hey there, do you know this area? You do. Great, I'm lost. Spectacularly so. Oh, only Ralsei. Ba 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 ba. Pew! Do you know how to get to Brickwell? You do. The monster looks relieved. Would you, uh, where are my manners? Howdy! I'm Ezzelide. I'm Ralsei. You introduce yourself, probably giving him like a what the fuck was that look. Miss Twinkle, god freaking damn it, Ralsei. He repeats. Would you mind showing me the way? I'm terrible with direction. So am I. Technically, do not trust me with directions. I get lost in freaking Minecraft. You smile kindly and you don't mind at all. Ralsei looks relieved. Thank you. If I'm late, my sibling will never let me hear the end of it. You're happy to help. Lots of beams. How lucky for me. The two of you start walking. You take the lead and he matches your pace. Do you work around here, yes? You answer that you do. Oh, really? What do you do? You're a singer. Frosty looks strangely fascinating. I've never had a job like yours. It looks exhausting. You like it well enough. He asks, you ask what kind of job he does. Yeah, what do you do, Ralsei, my boy? Uh, he glanced at the sky. I mostly help my dad with his, uh, uh, manager. He's a manager of sort. Family business, you know. <sighs> this is why I think he knows stuff. Because Car and his reaction tell me they know a lot more than they're willing to freaking let on. There's some, they know some freaking dodgy shit is happening at home in the Fell Kingdom as well. You nod. As you walk, Ralsei asks you more questions about your job. He's seemingly genuinely interested and you sense some danger from him, so you feel comfortable to answer him. When you arrive at his destination, he thanks you with a grin and holds out his hand to you. Okay, the thing is, if I meet freaking asshole and my heart goes rinky dinky rinky dinky, I know that freaking asshole killed me. And then we'll 100% freaking punch him. When you place your hand in his, he gives it a firm but friendly shake. It was a pleasure meeting you, Twinkle, says Ralsei. Yes, same to him. There's a shout further down the road and Ralsei turns his hand in the direction of the voice. He briefly frowns and lets go of your hand. I hope we meet again. Likewise, Bye, Miss Twinkle. Today was all right. Yeah, it was all right, wasn't it? Thankfully, nothing bad happened. All is good. All is right with the world. I'm still freaking sussy of, uh, Daisy Sunny. You make it home. Okay, so I really think that there's something that maybe, maybe it's a possibility we have a, a possible culprit here, a possible person to put blame on. <laughs> It could be Daisy's son. My boy, why would my boy do anything? You never know, Daisy. Sometimes it's the least likely ones. But also, again, my reasoning for thinking it. He was away on tour, meaning that would explain why Dr. Rose suddenly wasn't active but then came back. And also, he did share an apartment complex. Daisy shared an apartment complex with, um, with us, but we don't know if, like, the flower basket... Maybe that was from Daisy originally seen in there. I don't know. It could have been. Or maybe Dr. Rose left them there knowing that if somebody goes there, maybe they bloom. I don't know. It's quite a stretch, okay? I can't explain everything, but the, it would, it does seem to match up though a bit with him. Like, Dr. Rose is sounding in activity. He could have technically been away 
on tour and then came back and also being somebody who works in the military you would have some magical background you see there's always a chance there could be something on there but again it's just a possible theory that he could be it also yeah I'm recording this at like late at night so I'm close to falling asleep <sighs> So what do you guys think? Do you think that maybe there is some like truth or possibility that maybe Jay-Z son has something to do with something? Possibly. We're gonna go into chapter three. I'm also gonna be recording another game for you guys. Um, which I'm super excited to get that one done. So you guys are gonna be seeing me wrapping up this one and also playing another game that I'm really excited for that's gonna have like a lot of bad freaking endings to find. Whew. Either way. This is interesting. I don't know if any of you guys agree with some of my series. But hey, they are there regardless. Anyway, I'll see you guys in chapter 3. And also, good night. I'm going to head to bed now. I'm really goddamn tired. Ugh. Welcome to the end of the video, Future Twinkle here. So first of all, I was sick for the last couple of days and that's why I didn't get the videos up when I was supposed to. So thank you everybody who stuck around. I literally didn't even know I was sick until I woke up in bed and I was confused what happened. Because apparently I fainted, so well, that was a thing. Never done that before. Anyway, 10 likes on this video and you will get another If Mafia Fell episode as soon as the goal is hit. I will try to get it up as soon as possible, but remember you guys did vote for me to only post one video a day. So yeah, you might have to wait a little bit for certain episodes to get up. But I will get them up because I want to complete all the games that we have. So head over to the community tab right now and there will be a new list of games for you guys to pick from. If Mafia Fell will not be included because we're waiting for the goal on this one to be hit. And there was a bunch of other stuff I was supposed to say, but I don't remember. Ew, gosh darn it all. There we go again. Oh, another thing I should probably point out. Apparently now, if a horror tale by Miauska is uncancelled. So, we will probably cover that if indeed it is officially like uncancelled. And, yeah. There was something else I was supposed to say, but as usual, I forget it. I forgot it. Forget it? Forgot it? Those are not words. Are those words? Maybe they're words. Either way, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of today's video. And bye.